Participating in an event in real time with other people is a really powerful way to build community, make people feel included, and really it can be a lot of fun and really entertaining. In the world of the internet, we can do this through something called live streaming. And you may have seen live streams before. You may have participated in live streams. There are so many different reasons and ways that we can use live streams for a seminar where somebody can't attend, but they can tune in through the internet for a classroom where I want people to be able to come in and learn something if they're at home for playing video games. For example, you know, if I was to show the world how to play Donkey Kong, I might break the internet. So I, I don't do Donkey Kong live streams, but if I did, the internet would be destroyed. But the, the whole point of a live stream is that it allows people to connect into something that's happening as it's happening. And that's pretty cool. For a lot of live streams though, there's a bit of a challenge and that is, in order to use the live streaming software, a lot of it, you have to be in a situation or in a location where you can install the software, where you have cameras, where you have all of the equipment that you need in order to push that live stream onto the internet and then have it visited by people that want to participate. And that's great. If I'm doing something here in the studio, Setting up a live stream is fairly easy. I have some videos here on the channel where I show you how to do that. I use some different types of software, but probably my favorite software for live streaming is uh, probably either uh, Switcher Studio or StreamYard. I use both those pieces of software. I like them both. The problem though is what happens if I want to go somewhere where I can't set up equipment? I might be able to set up equipment in a classroom. I might be able to set up equipment in a theater. But it becomes difficult if I have to move from classroom to classroom. It becomes difficult if I don't have access to the seminar room before the live stream in order to set everything up. So what we really need is we need live streaming software that I can use anywhere. Now I still will need an internet connection, but I can use Switcher Studio to just use my phone and in my case I use a little gimbal in order to create stabilization but just with these two pieces of equipment an iPhone with an internet data plan and a gimbal in order to create stabilization I can create a live stream from anywhere. In fact, I'll link down below, I have a demonstration of a live stream where I walked to work to go to the gym through a park. For an hour and 20 minutes, I was live streaming that entire process just to demonstrate how easy it is to live stream from anywhere using Switcher Studio. And the reason this is very useful is let's say I have a game or I, let's say I have some sort of live event that's taking place in a park or somewhere where I don't really have the ability to set up a lot of equipment. Using Switcher Studio, I can have an entire broadcast studio just from my phone. I can even add multiple phones from other people that are there to give me different angles and control it from Switcher Studio in the same way that I would here in my actual studio. It's pretty powerful. So today what I did is I, I went down to the park and all I took with me was my phone and my gimbal and I created a live stream just to demonstrate how easy it is to set up. Let's go take a look at that. When I launch Switcher Studio on my phone, I'll be able to add a live stream or a recording. I'll do a recording for this video, but this could just as easily be a live stream that I've set up a destination for. And what I'm able to do is when I start the recording, I will enter a studio, either horizontal or vertical video. I've chosen horizontal. And you'll see that this is now my studio, my interface, where I can start recordings, I can use overlays, I can do all of the things Switcher Studio offers. I'll switch the audio microphone from the iPhone. Again, the more equipment that you bring with you, the more robust your recordings could be, multi-camera, different audio. But this is quite good. I can even zoom in and zoom out. Now I am on a gimbal here, so it's a really nice smooth motion. So you can see here that I can go and change that. Down at the bottom here, I can go into my favorites. Underneath favorites, I could have an overlay that I record. So in this case here, let's say that was my morning walk to the gym. You can go in and you can set these up in advance, which I recommend. So for example, I could go in and have my daily show with 
I guess some folks here, it's not me. I would set this up with my brand kit. I would set this up with my, my text in there, but it just adds a lot of variety to the live stream. One of the things I really like is to have an agenda. So by setting an agenda for my live stream in advance, if I'm going to do, for example, a walk through a park where I want to talk about some of the features and such, I could do that. If I just click at the bottom here, I'll get that menu back. So I just have to grab the bottom here. And you can see I have my menu back. I could change the cameras. So right now I only have the one source, which is my iPhone. My iPhone actually has two angles. There's the out facing angle, and then I could bring it to the me facing angle. I think the trees look better on that side. So we'll just go back to source here, trees in the distance there. And then of course I could go into my favorites and I could remove that. So one of the things I always recommend is that you become familiar with it before you actually go to a sporting event, before you actually go to the live event. A little bit of practice and you'll be in good shape to work with it. You can do a lot of things, for example, you could go in and you could add different effects, timestamps, different type of polling if you're in a live stream event. There's a scoreboard that you can have in here as well. This is a bit of a quick sort of demonstration of me using the live streaming features. The key element here is that I'm able to do this no matter where I am. So if I'm walking around, let's say a, a view of a park, I'm going for a walk in a park, I can bring people along with me. Most often I see live streams for things like outdoor concerts or a sporting event that you might have or something along those lines. I'm a big fan of going for hikes and now I can bring people along either a live stream or a recording that I could then use later on. But the point is that unlike a lot of live streaming software, this can run completely on my phone. I can do all sorts of different type of overlays to add a lot of variety to it. So for example, if I was running a race, I don't know if I'd want to run a race holding a gimbal and a phone, but if I was doing something like a hike and I wanted to have different checkpoints in there, or I wanted to have an agenda as I walk through the park of different points of interest, I can easily do that using the live streaming through Switcher Studio. Now this has just been a demonstration of some of basic features of live streaming from anywhere. With Switcher Studio, you can configure a lot more. In fact, I created a video on Switcher Studio. I'll link it somewhere here or somewhere down below. And you can do things like have things built in advance, different things like overlays and titles. You can even run videos during the process, have pre-roll videos, have videos throughout the broadcast. There's so many different things you can do. It, it really is like a studio that you have with you. I'll sometimes, if I'm going somewhere live, bring my iPad and my iPhone to give me more than one camera. And I show that in the other video that I created. If I'm doing something like a theatrical event or a sporting event, first of all, you always have to make sure you have the permission to do the live streaming. But if you do, if you're in charge of the event, you could do things like gated content to solicit donations or to solicit a fee for, for watching the event. There's so much you can do. Now, you can also embed this on your own private website. So it doesn't necessarily have to be shown on platforms like Facebook or YouTube, although those are certainly platforms that you can broadcast the live stream to. You can do it to multiple platforms. There's a lot you can do. Now, if you're interested in trying out Switcher Studio for yourself, I have put a link in the description below. If you want to see the video where I live streamed my entire walk into work, where I, well, to the gym actually, which was a workout. Um, if you want to see that, I'll link that down below too. That's just a peaceful walk through the park. So there's so many things you can do with live streaming and with Switcher Studio, you can do those live streams from anywhere without losing the features that you want to have during the live stream to make it exciting, dynamic and engaging. So I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know the type of things that you think you're going to live stream. Comment down below. Uh, are there events that you go to outdoors events in a park? or maybe a sporting event where you've been frustrated because you want to share that event with people and you didn't have a way to do that, but now you have a way. So I think that's very helpful and useful. Let me know below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.